Welcome to the 25th season of Kevin Bichelle's Preteen Basketball Classic. Where your man at? Where your man at? Where your man at? Watch the push, ref. Watch the push. Yep, yep, get there. Get there. Back court. Back court. Cut him off down here. Cut him off down here. Get your hands out. Get your hands out. Close it up. Good D. Pick the ball up. Cut it off. Cut it off. What about the how you push her off like that, ref? You ain't see that? You ain't see that? You give it up. Become all the way from the cross and you give up. It is the last Saturday in June, 2004. We are in the heart of the Bedford-Stuyvesant section of Brooklyn, New York. We are in the midst of a celebration. The reason for the celebration is that it is opening day for the treasured Kevin Bichelle Preteen Basketball Classic. This particular Saturday is the beginning of the 25th season of the Preteen Classic. The Preteen, as it is known, is an outdoor summer basketball league that takes place in the schoolyard of Public Elementary School 305. It has operated for most of the 25 years without major corporate or political sponsorship that funds many youth programs across the nation. It was founded and has been operated by a small nucleus of hardworking, concerned men and women who wanted to use basketball to impact the young men and women of Brooklyn in a positive manner. Brooklyn, with close to 2.5 million people, is the most populated of the five boroughs of New York City. The Bed-Stuy section has more African Americans than any other New York City neighborhood with over 200,000 persons. Mainstream media and outsiders often portray Bed-Stuy as a poverty-stricken, crime-filled wasteland. Reality says it is a melting pot which includes people living in middle-class brownstones side-by-side side with housing projects and high-rise apartment buildings. Schools and churches are in abundance. Notables such as political icon Shirley Chisholm, basketball greats Lenny Wilkins and Connie Hawkins, show business icons Jay-Z, Biggie Smalls, Most Def, Max Roach, Lena Horn, and Ben Vereen have all called the neighborhood home. The neighborhood embodies the spirit, if you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. It is a neighborhood where basketball is life. Peace, everybody. My name is Bobito Garcia, a.k.a. DJ Cucumber. Slice, slice, slice. Probably most known on these courts for being the editor-in-chief of Bounce Magazine. Uh, in our second issue, 
which was the summer of 2004 issue. We had a, a photo essay that, that featured the Kevin Bouchel preteen classic uh, in his 24th year. And uh, definitely got a lot of love for that out in Brooklyn. Um, a lot of the kids out here know me as well for being the voiceover announcer for NBA Street Volume 2, which is an EA Sports video game. And uh, when I came out here last summer, I just felt very welcome, um, but also identified really well with just the, the energy and passion of being a young kid and, and playing in a, in a biddies level midget tournament. In New York, there's over 70 tournaments in the summer. And uh, it's, just, it's just great that there's that much opportunity for New York youth to get involved in something that they're, that they're um, excited about, something that they're gonna hopefully learn from, from the coaches and the staff. Uh, I see here the Kevin Bouchel that obviously the staff cares a lot about the kids and um, you know there's also the reward as well of being involved in a tournament like this because some of the kids that have come out of here have gone on and done a lot of great things. Just this court seems a little magical as well just how it's real small sort of like the West 4th Street cage. Um, Bed-Stuy obviously has a great history of, of playground basketball players from Roger Brown to Connie Hawkins uh, to Pearl Washington, you know, famous tournaments like Soul in the Hole. I mean, Brooklyn definitely, you know, Brooklyn and Manhattan, you know, definitely represent playground basketball to the fullest from day one to day now to day future. I just got to thank my man George Littlejohn, who's like very dear to me because not many people sort of share the same commitment to, to, uh, underground basketball as they do the underground music and me and George are, are right there eye to eye. I first got involved in preteen in 1981 as a coach. I first became aware of preteen 1980 where a good friend of mine Tim Shepard was coaching a team called the Gophers and he said you need to come down and check out these kids and I went down I liked it I enjoyed it as a fan I enjoyed it and then in my mind I thought yeah wouldn't that may want to coach and then um, the following year Tim couldn't coach, and he asked me to coach that team, which became the 76ers. That was my first involvement as a coach in 1981. My name is Ronald Dr. Yang Kelly. My name is John Hawkins, better known as Hawk. And I'm um, Ken Bushell, better known as Ken Ken. What happened to the foot? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the foot part didn't last too long, I guess. But the, 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 the foot part's in there also, uh, uh, AKA Dr. Foot. Well, I guess I'm the one actually who came up with the idea to start the tournament. Uh, it was a key point in the area during that time. During this time, the PAL Center was being closed down, and also the YMCA was was closed down for years. So there was very little recreational different activities going on here. So uh, they fixed the park up. They just had to fix the park up. And I remember coming home from school in Cleveland, and they had basketball leagues there. So when I came here, there was nothing happening. And I was like, yo, let's start a league. And uh, we told Kelly about it. And the first time we told Kelly about it, he says, uh, nah, get out of here, y'all ain't gonna have no league. And from there, Bush, Kevin, he says there, right from there, we gonna have this league. We gonna have this league, you know? and we 25 years late. But the age of 12 kept us at the elementary school level. Yeah, more or less. 13, you have junior high school. Junior high school. Then you have older kids playing right. against the younger kids. Right. A lot of times the younger kids are not going to get too much better right. than that. So 12 years old was kind of a limit. Like maybe some of them do go to junior high, but also the younger kids do get a chance to be a Plus the fact on, 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 on the basis of the age 12, we kept it at an elementary level where that was the real learning process. In other words, with no learning process at the, at the elementary level, they go straight to junior high school and get all the bad habits. We tried to focus on learning the game as well as all off the court, in life in general, and on the court. Because our motto has always been books before ball. We'd have to go inside the schools and check the school records. Right. Sometimes they wouldn't be so available to us in the middle of the summer or the beginning of the summer. So we'd try to check school records or then we, we learned that the kids themselves would, would tell on each other. Not that we would look for kids to tattletale on one another, but that's just the way it would be. Because 
kids know each other's age. That's right. And they would say who was 12, who was 11, and who was who just turned 13, right. and you know, who was born Bruce down always south had a, or something Bruce, like that. Kevin Michelle always had a saying. He said after the game, like the guy get on the court, the kids yell, ring him, ring him. Like this year, about 10 or 12 kids. And I said, Bush, what you think about checking on this kid? He said, 12 China men ain't gonna be lying to say <laughs> We always was self-funded. We ain't had no Nike, no Reebok, no nothing. Everybody came out. Well, basically, Bush Just came Bush. out of his Just pocket. Bush. He came yeah, out of his pocket all the time. If, that, if, he, if, he, if he ain't spend uh, $200,000 on these kids in, in the 23 years he was here dealing with this year, he ain't spend one penny. So many tournaments and even businesses come and go with funding. The funding's there one year. Then it's gone. Right. Or it's there for a few years, they pull a plug on you and then you fizzle out. But doing it for the labor of love and having the people take responsibility and ownership of it, having an entry fee, uh, 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 accumulating whatever monies that that uh, uh, gave us, and then we would budget it down according to the shirts and according to the awards and to get the nets and things like that there. It, I feel and I think everybody agrees that it's, it made it go on this long. Yeah. My name is Jose, yo peace, but 305 in bad style, I'm known as Chief. I would say about 85% of us that grew up around here, somewhere preteen touched their life. Gave you your first tournament, first time being on a team for a lot of us. And for some of us, it carried on all the way into the NBA. So it's pretty important to us down here in Bedford Stuyvesant. Kevin Bushell opened the doors for all of us. As soon as I graduated from preteen, when I turned 13, I, I started coaching the Little Lakers, which was the team that I played for. All right, we're here with the coach of the Lakers, Jose Lopez, former, former Laker himself. All right, because you think you can hold on to this big lead you have here? Yes, I think so. All right. And uh, actually, we won the championship that year. And I'm just 13 years old, the youngest coach to win a championship still in preteen classes. My name is Dwayne Townsend. I got involved as a player in 1980. Our first year playing, we played with the Gophers, um, played with Tim Shepard. That was my first year. Then my second year, I played with um, George Littlejohn, now it's the commissioner of preteen. We won it that year. Then after that, I got involved as a coach. I coached with Kevin Haywood as Optimism. Then from Optimism, I got up with the Hoyts. And basically, I've been a Hoya ever since. I won it as a player. My son played in preteen with me. As long as I'm here on this earth, I think I'm gonna be involved with preteen. I love it. I love my neighborhood. I love best and I love this area. And basically, I love basketball, so I love being around kids, playing in here, coaching. It's helping me live out my dream that I couldn't go on playing, being a great player. So I live my dream through them. Founding preteen commissioner Kevin Bushell was the rock architect and the great overseer of the preteen classic for 23 years. The league and neighborhood was devastated when he died suddenly of kidney failure two days after opening day in June of 2003. He was very supportive of each one of us in our own lives. Oh man. You know, whatever, if we had our own situation that, that created stress in our life, whether it was with uh, someone in our immediate family or whether it was uh, something that was going on at work or something like that, uh, you could always go and talk to him about it. If, if, if you needed something, you know, he was always there to give it to you. A lot of these kids, especially these kids out here now, really gonna miss his presence, him not being here. Not only was he a great human being, and he was like my brother, I mean, it's hard to put into words to, to, to capsulize him, somebody you know since you're three years old, you know, understand, and that's 1955. One of his aspirations in coming up, and I, you all, would, I'm sure, would agree, was that he wanted to be a play-by-play -play announcer. Uh, I've cut a horse after such an exciting ball game. The final outcome was the Lakers 74 and they rocked 73. 
It was two foul shots by Deshaun Jones, the Laker guard that pulled it out for the Lakers. Uh, this ball game was in doubt all the way throughout the second half. Uh, just that much you can say, a game that was tight all the way down the line. Uh, and uh, it came down to two free throws, and they did not have a chance to shoot uh, the final shot because it was tied up a jump ball. Uh, again, uh, apparently the loss of Reggie Lyons did not hurt any. They played it as hard and as tough as they could, and they just came out a one-point loser. They do not repeat as chance for the third consecutive year. Lakers are, are the chance for 1986. What more can you say? My name is Kevin Michelle. It's been a great ball game. I'm excited. I'm hoarse. And I'm going to sign off now. Working with Kevin Bouchelle, um, you know, AKA, if I call him commissioner, was great because um, he's a very low key person, very thorough, and it was fun because, you know, whatever he said would get done, would get done. So working with him actually was, was a breeze. Like, I was, I was assisting him, but everything was together. So it was just a matter of taking things to another level. What I like about it is that when we started this league, we had a team from Gates Avenue, we had a team from Notion Avenue, we had Monroe, Monroe Street, 44, Putnam, Putnam, Putnam Avenue. So we brought the whole community here together. Yeah, right. So the park was like a central area. Really? And we brought togetherness here. Really? Even 25 years later here, we still have some togetherness and people do still respect the park. That's right. So, you know, that's what I think is a real, you know, excellent point. It saved a lot of lives and it made a lot of people do, start doing the right things and so forth. My name is Benita Watson. Um, I live around in the area in Gates Avenue. My son started out in preteen playing with Pee Wee's Playhouse and um, I enjoy coming out. He's no longer playing with uh, Pee Wee's Playhouse, but I still come out and support the children because I teach at PS305. I enjoy seeing the children play. Um, when we sit back and look at how the children come out here and play, we know where they're at. They're not out here in the streets doing bad things. They're out here. Um, just making themselves happy. Basketball, I grew up with basketball, and I love to see the children. My father played basketball, and my oldest brother played basketball. And I love to see the children out here play. Um, when you want to know where your kids is at, just come to 305 in the park, and you will find them. I started coaching in the preteen, I guess, what was that, like 1992, I think. 92. I, uh was introduced to it by a friend of mine, George Littlejohn. And basically, it came out of like a weird conversation that I had with um, another friend of mine. We had went to a movie theater. And basically, uh, we were, well, it came out of a situation where we were watching a movie, and this was kind of prevalent in the 90s, where you get like a group of kids and they'd be a little bit disruptive. Uh, but it was like it was like too much in this particular thing where no one was enjoying the movie and uh, we went and like said something to him and you know it, it became a little bit of a thing and myself and my friend you know we we, we kind of quiet these guys down we walk away and then they they said they tried to say some some little thing and we noticed like they were they were young they were pretty young like uh, 14 15 we, you know we sat down and we were like basically you know just going off about you know what's up you know what's, what's going to happen with the next generation of kids and uh in this conversation you know it came down to like well damn what are we doing <laughs> what are we doing about it uh you know i didn't give birth to those kids but in a sense they're like my kids or at least we have to see that and take some responsibility for it so in talking to george about you know, that situation and finding some kind of way that I wanted to make a difference. He mentioned, you know, I might have something for you. And I said, really? He goes, well, there's this league out in Bedford-Stuyvesant. Um, I don't know if, you know, it's going to be convenient for you, but if you'd like to come down and see some games, we could probably use someone like you, you know, to coach one of the teams. I knew nothing about putting together a team or anything. I mean, I'd played you know, and played for a few teams, but in terms of actually organizing, it's a whole other thing. But I was interested in at least seeing what was going on. And um, just in talking to Bush, I'd met, you know, a few people. I met, met John Hawkins. Uh, they sat down, we talked about it a little bit, and I said, you know what? I'll try it. I'll try it at least for one summer and see how it goes. And uh, that, that, that's kind of how it got started for me. 
us being out here 25 years, the longest running tournament in Brooklyn, 25 years, and what we started with this on a grander scale, because it was always kids 13 and 14 say, yo, man, why don't you have a league for us? I said, you got 500 leagues. Why don't you just go on out there and get involved? You understand? So in turn, a lot of these guys that went on to other things, like other leagues, older leagues, and so forth, so on, they started, it was like spreading the wealth for 305. We became like a mecca, a mecca of talent. Hello, this is John Hawkins for the pre j Classic Championship Game 1986. We're about to introduce the Lakers. All right. Come on. My name's Jamal Tizzy, Lakers. God. All right. All right, good game. Get on the foul line. Jamal Tizzy, um, born in New York, off of Jason Tompkins, raised in 305. I'm the alumni in the park, you know. Um, there's other guys in here that's older than me that played in here before me, but it just keeps me out of trouble. Um, certain places where stuff happened and I wasn't there because I was in the park playing the preteen. And just being around guys that like to play basketball and support themselves, but that's all they wanted to do. You know, my years growing up was a good experience here, and you now I come back to support them all the time. It went from community community-based league to where it was gates, block versus block kind of thing, to where the coaches were from the community, to where it became somewhat of an invitational, where we you know, would invite certain players or certain teams to come in. And then it kind of came back full circle in a way to where the invitational part was was like an era unto itself where you had the Stephon Marbury's and and uh, 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 Wall. Jaquay Walls and Rayford Austin. They would come from other communities to come play here, but now it's kind of come back to where it's more of a community league because of a lot of the people that used to play in preteen, their children now play in preteen. Right. I remember pre team, man. I was about 12 years old. I think I scored about 52 points. I think I, I set a record that day. And I think the very next day, I forget the kid name, he scored about 60. So he took my record, like, not even my, it didn't stand for a whole summer. But it was one of the greatest, one of the best tournaments I ever played in, man. It was very competitive. And, you know, all of us grew up playing that league. And it, it was a great league for all of us back then. I hope they keep it going. My name is Larry Major. I coached in pre-teens for seven years, from 84 to 89, then I came back from 2 and 93. I taught at a neighboring, neighborhood junior high school, maybe four blocks from here, and I wanted to be involved with the kids during the summer. So one of the kids said, okay, pre-teen classic is right down Monroe and, you know, can you get us in? I said, okay. So I came down, I met the commissioner, and it was a relationship ever since then. When I see a lot of my former players and you know, kids that I coached here, we, we did things in different places, but more, the most of our memories and our best memories come from this court. My feeling was that I was going to be dealing, and I, I was interested in dealing with kids who won, um, kind of had an interest, you know, in basketball, but wanted to be part of something. I, I think at that age, when you're talking about kids who are like 12 and under, they either want to be around their friends or if they're, you know, kids who are kind of isolated and don't have friends, they want to be around something that they can be a part of and identify with. And basketball in any community usually like provides that, particularly if it's organized. You know, they see the shirts or they see other kids playing. They kind of get drawn to that. bed native and former NBA player Kenny Charles is currently the head coach of the Harlem Strong Dogs of the American Basketball Association. He was the first ever NBA analyst for ESPN and has served as a referee in the preteen. It gives the basis for a lot of basketball knowledge and a lot of it gives the kids the opportunity to work with other kids at an early age and that's really the key to life being able to work with other people and if you can get that into your life early on you're ahead of the game lester roberts buddy keaton and a lot of older gentlemen contributed to our growing up so i think it was a good job and i think it's almost imperative that you give back in any way you can and i thought it was an easy way to give back to my community 
The shirts are bigger than the kids. The shorts are bigger than the kids. The ball is bigger than a lot of the kids. And it's just fun. You try not really to be too technical because you want to make sure they have a good time. No, that's fun. Hi, my name is Carl Sanders. I went to uh, Grady High School. I played 1998 City Champions, Madison Square Garden. We took the whole thing. First, first I went to a junior college, Monroe Community College, and I got a scholarship to St. Francis College, Division I in Brooklyn. And now I'm currently playing in the ABA with the Harlem Strong Dogs. And we got a 10 and 4 record and playing pretty well. Everything's going good. And uh, my favorite memory from preteen is uh, around, uh, I think it was uh, 89. It's, this is like when I first started playing. And uh, Stephon, Stephon Marbury didn't show up to the game. So my coach, he told us, you know, today would be our day to step up. So that same day, I had 24 points in the game. And uh, eventually, at the end of the year, I won Rookie of the Year for preteen. And that was, you know, like my most favorable moment about preteen and just playing every year. And the thing I remember the most is when they used to have the uh, stats on the tree. They used to have the stats on the tree. I used to always look forward to that every year getting better and seeing if my stats was getting better. Joe Francis, I'm now on the uh, assistant freshman coach at Severian High School. I used to coach teams, I first came in 1988 the preteen and, and met Kevin and all the rest of the guys. And I brought a nice little team in. We lost in the championship, matter of fact, to Miss Ruthie's team. And that was a group of guys, which included Eric Balky, was 10 years old on that team at the time. A Couple of guys was on the team. There wasn't no really big name guys as far as making all city, all Americans, but they went on to play high school ball and went to play college ball. Some parents thought we were too hard, but for the parents that stayed, I can only say that we made sure their kids went to college. At that time, at the Boys Club, we had a, a staff of about 10 guys, which included Mike Bosket and Kenny Pretlow. Right, right, and uh, our whole thing was checking report cards, good grades, so they could be able to play ball and go to school. It was books before ball for us. And at the same time, pre-teens had that same atmosphere and the concept, which, which caused us to say, you know what, this is something for us. And with the backing of the Boys Club, Boys and Girls Club at the time, we came to preteen for the enjoyable experience. And one year we had like a slight little problem. All the guys off Franklin that sell all the hat on, they were coming down to the park. They would come down to the park and you see about two, three hundred junkies line up. Bang, bang, bang. So me and Bush and them, we had to step to them and say, yo, homie, we running this tournament here for these kids, man. You got mothers out here and this and that and all y'all lining up. The cat agreed and so forth because we didn't want to take it to that next level because you know how violent those type of things get. So with that out the way, we kept going. We progressed nicely a few years. Then one year they wanted to fix the park. One year, actually, I was like about three or four years ago, we had an obstacle where the park was closed and it was really funny because we had just had our opening game on a Sunday, opening day, and we was hyped up about the season. And then I get a call from the head of the parks department telling us that um, park is um, being shut down. Then I get another call from a priest who was sponsoring one of the teams saying our park is being cut up. And I'm like, what? And so I run down to the park to see what's happening. I see the park already is boarded up. The rims are taken off. I'm like, oh my God, what are we going to do? <laughs> and this particular day, Bush was off. And I'm like, oh man, what are we going to do? So um, at that point when he came home, I actually was home. I was actually sitting in the stoop waiting for him. I said, you know, we got a problem. And he said, yeah, I see. And then so we went straight to um, 8 Ball Park. And the funny thing about that is the whole neighborhood came together because they saw Bush and I walking some people. And they, and they know that we should be at 305 Park. So they actually kind of joined with us. So we had like all of a sudden this little parade, about 10 people walking to 8 Ball Park. And so it was kind of like, not just me and Bush, about 10 of us walking, like kind of like, oh, can we use this park? So the guys at 8-Ball right away knew who we were, and their thing was, okay, um, no problem. It was like, it was that easy, just what court do you want? And we started like, a, we took like three days off, and then that week we started 8-Ball Park. But the only thing was, we couldn't use the park on Sundays, so we had to use another park, which was on the cab in um, Mossy Avenue. So that was, it was, it was, a, it was um, a challenge, but you know, we worked it out. <laughs> 
friends. Um, of course, small, basically, probably small as going basketball. But it was fun. It was like playing in the cage, man. Um, I had a great time playing. So I always loved playing, playing it. Especially with Big June, Fat June, everybody know Big June. You know, June coming in, sitting on the floor, outside, coaching. That was fun, man. The hell is the This season, the Classic features eight teams. All play on opening day except the all-girls team, No Limit. The first game features the Beacons, who beat the Young Hoyas for their first win in preteen history. Dwayne Townsend was a player in the very first preteen season. He is now a veteran coach of the Young Hoyas. Ruth Payne of the Stompers, Steve Davis of Lofton's Lions, and Coach Booza of the Hoyas are other veteran preteen coaches. Playhouse, coached by Devon Pee Wee Irvin, are fan favorites due to their backcourt of point guard DJ Cutler and off guard Cubby Walls. Cubby is a dead eyed sharpshooter, while DJ is a savvy point guard who some feel could be next in the Brooklyn line of great point guards. The Hawks are also favorites. They have a well rounded team that features the all around excellent play of 10 year old Winston McLeod and the league's leading scorer, Mark York. My name is Ruth Payne, and the kids call me Miss Ruthie. I've been coaching since about 1984. I came into a pre-team in 1987. I won the championship in 1988 with Sheldon West, Shandu McNeil, Neil, Kojo Black, um, uh, a kid named Man, I can't think of his name, and a few other kids from Red Hook. Um, we, winded up, we ended the season with seven players and we won the championship. I won the championship, uh, the winter championship, about 96 or 97 with Teddy Mumphrey. Um, I'm trying, and some other guys that I know are playing in college now, I just can't think of their names. I've had so many kids, not just in preteen, but in Hoop Connection, PAL, Mickey O, Department of Parks, you name it, except for the big tournaments that cost money, because I've never had sponsors. I don't know why I keep Coming to preteen, don't have sponsors, I'm paying up my own pocket. I guess it's insanity, sort of. But I love the game and I love coaching little kids because I get the chance to see them grow up and go on TV and be in the NBA and play in college. I like that. I look forward to coaching in preteen, regardless whether my teams are good or bad. This year we had like a losing team, <laughs> but I had some dynamic players. Um, Dion McIntosh and Javon Pinkston. You're going to hear about them in the future, I guarantee you, okay? My name is Steve Davis. I've been coaching in preteen since Omar Cook and Mike Boyton was playing here with BT Express. Brooklyn, USA, BT Express used to be the powerhouses in those days. Uh, the name of my team is always Lofton Lions, and I named my team after the supervisor that I used to work for at 390. Her name was Lucinda Lofton. She died of cancer. So that's, I tribute my team to her. These are Lofton's Lions. This is my 12th year doing this. I've been to the championship two times and lost to Brooklyn, USA. Gary Irvin beat me the last year here. Now he's in Mississippi State. Uh, I appreciate coming out here every year because I have kids and my kids are all in the age range. My first son started out playing out here when he was 10 until he got about 12. Last team he played on was a whole team of girls who came from Long Island. Basically, I enjoy teaching the kids about life through basketball. Hopefully they'll be responsible and good citizens when they grow up. 
A lot of the kids I've had have gone on to college at least. They've got their diplomas, they've worked a good job, and they've stayed out of trouble. Drugs and all that thing is not a part of their life. I haven't gotten everybody, but I've gotten the majority of them, and I feel good about that. The ones that I haven't gotten, learn from the ones who have gone ahead and become parents and fathers and husbands and all that kind of stuff. My name is Sassen Lawrence. Um, my history in regards to the preteen and coaching began approximately seven, eight years ago. I started out with coaching with Miss Ruthie, also coaching with the Brooklyn Bridge. And then from there I started my own, with my own team called the Hawks and we still call the Hawks up to today. I've had, over the years, the team has improved year after year. My first year, actually, according to George, the commissioner, he believes that we had our strongest team, but we could never get all the players assembled together at one time. They were involved with playing in other tournaments, you know, and other teams. So uh, over the years, we've gotten better and better, and now I'm hooked up with um, another group of coaches, Coach Terry and Coach Reeves from uh, PS3, the elementary school that um, most of our kids come from. Vaughn Irving, Peewee's Playhouse. I opened it up in 1993, grew up in this neighborhood, and I just felt that, you know, I'm always in this neighborhood. I just felt I wanted to give back to something in the neighborhood, you know, keep a business in the neighborhood, you know, without going somewhere else. And we've been here since 1993, and we're still going strong, and just try to, you know, just keep giving the community black businesses, give people jobs and things to do for the neighborhood. Normally I coach two, two divisions, 12 and under and 14 and under. Um, since 2000, my first year I only had one division, which was uh, 12 and under. But after that, I always had two and three teams. But this is my first year because my guys that was always older in high school, so I just thought it was more important for them to have workouts. One of just playing in tournaments and a lot of them travel a lot, so we just work out most of the time. So I just did the concentrate on the 12 and under this year. First thing I got out of it is I, I like the fact of seeing kids progress. A lot of kids play ball, but they're, they're not taught actually the right way to play the game. You know, so I just feel good knowing that each year I can see a kid progress. I think the difference between me and a lot of coaches, you know, everybody say that we're the favorite, or there's some coaches or some teams that feel that they're better, but I think the difference between us and a lot of other teams that we actually practice. It's not like you're saying, well, I got a bunch of guys that can play. 
and we go to the park. You know, I take time to go to the park with the kids and we work out and we practice and we just, we just hang out and just have fun together. Cubby and DJ. Well, first, I like to say that's the reason, only reason why I came back this year because they played me last year and I could see that they really wanted to play this, you know, their last year preteen. And they've been around me since because I had their brothers, Nunu and Kendall. And they would go with the younger guys, and I just watched them grow, and I always told them there's gonna have to come a time when your big brother's not gonna be here. And I just thought hey, this is their time for them to step up and show what they could do without having their big brothers around. I think every kid wants to experience to live in this neighborhood that I know of, I wanna say that I played in preteen. Brothers and sisters, let me give you a critical angle on critical stakes. There are many stories about this because you see some stories are straight, some got bow legs. This one has got the pin leg. It's okay and it, it is critical. Critical condition. What do you do? Do you dance? Do you jump? As for me, my brother. We view this as a big game. Um, it's going to like be a good scale to see where we're at. This is the first time we're playing Pee Wee's team, and um, this will give you give us a good gauge as to where we stand. If we got to improve, what changes we got to make, because we'll probably, in all likelihood, meet them in the championship if everything goes well for both teams. Today we had a coaches meeting, 
And in the meeting, there was controversy because the Playhouse had two players that played in the um, ninth game of the season. And our league has the rule that each player must play in at least eight games to be in the playoffs. So as a result, it caused controversy because it was protested by a number of teams. And some of the teams said they would leave, they would actually leave the tournament if it wasn't addressed. So during the post of the meeting, things came out. And a large part of it was um, that some of the rules that we had in the league had been slacked off this year. And as a result, the Playhouse felt that they were being picked on, that when they had that situation, they felt that um, because it was them, that they were being picked on and that um, it was unfair. So as a result, they decided to pull out the tournament, and that's where we are now. And then also we have a, a league rule that after, teams' rosters are frozen after the fourth game. But due to a couple teams this year that were not that competitive, I relaxed it and allowed um, a couple of the weaker teams to have a player. And as a result, that got thrown back out that if we allowed them to do it, then we should allow them, the um, playoffs to do it also. So as a result, um, Ms. Seabrooks and myself decided that every team, any player that came in after the fourth game would not be allowed to play in the tournament. And as a result, the playhouse pulled out. Okay. It, it affects the Stompers directly because the Stompers have one of the better players in the league and as the Stompers probably could have won the championship, but he can't play now. And also affects the Hoyas and the Young Hoyas, which had a player that can't play. So it actually, it's a total of about four or five players, so teams that are affected. The situation that happened at hand at preteen was, um, we were like six games into the season and the rules that were set from the beginning of the season were changed halfway into the season by the commission. Um, you know, several teams had done it already. Uh, it was like, I think, four games left in the season. I had brought two players onto my roster. Um, they played a game against the Hawks. It was a crucial game between the two top teams. We lost by six. I think that was on a Monday or Wednesday. That Saturday, the commissioner came to me and said that I wouldn't be allowed to have those two kids play. But the previous before that, that game, after we lost, he said they wouldn't be able to make the playoffs. And I asked him why. And he explained because they wasn't going to be able to make the eight games. But I told him that you changed the rules as a commission when you brought a team in six games after the season. So you changed the rules of your own rules. You allow other teams to do it, but you wouldn't allow my team to do it. They had a coaches meeting that only one kid would be allowed to play, which I thought was unfair because as a commissioner, you told me that the two kids could play as long as they made the next seven games. From what I'm looking at is how can you let the kids play the three, four, five, six games, and then before the playoffs say, well, only one kid could play. That's not fair. Everyone talks about it's for the kids when it's really not about the kids. Everyone wants their own personal glorification. You know, none of the kids were ringing. You know, so what's, what was really the altercation behind it? So in my opinion, I felt like I told George, the commissioner, you're picking and choosing. You allow this team to put it some, to change their team, you know, bring people on because they had a weaker team. You allow this team to do it. This, you allow for the team, but you want to uphold the rule when it came to my team after you as the commissioner have changed the rule which I felt was unfair to my team. I took my team out because I don't like how my kids were being mistreated. You know, I had two kids that was in preteen for years and it was their last year, DJ and Cubby, and I really felt bad taking them out. But I was showing them that if we a team, we gonna stay together as a team. Don't let nobody come up between us as a team. And I'm trying to teach them a lesson now that if you allow people to just do things to you now, you'll fall for anything later. So you have to stand up for something what you believe in now. You know, so after I explained it to them, you know, they didn't have a problem with it after that. And we just left it at that. I just took my team out. After the dropout of the playhouse, the Lions became a stronger contender for the championship, streaking to victories against all comers until they met the Hawks.
two tough games to Peavy's Playhouse. They're a very dominant team. They haven't played the Hawks yet. We hope to try to give them a loss in their record so that it balances out for the playoffs. We have what it takes, but I guess we'll be what we call late bloomers because these guys haven't had the time to play with each other as long as the other teams. But with heart and desire, I think that we can we can come out somewhere making somebody's season very soft. He's 11 year old. He's been after me for playing in pre-team since he was what nine years. So now he's with me and uh, he's showing a lot of effort. He's improving a lot. He's got a big heart. The last game we played against Peavy's Playhouse, he was the one guy that stepped up and played like he was a veteran. And he's one of the lowest guys on the team. Have a seat. Rest yourself. Huh? You right there? What happened? Y'all played them better when I wasn't here than when I was here. I don't know, man. If you don't want it, nobody can make you get it. When the, first, when the, first, when the starting five stop making mistakes that the second five is supposed to make, something is wrong. There's a word called tempo. And there's a fast tempo and there's a slow tempo. Our thing was to slow them down so that we can keep the, close, the score close. When they went man-to-man -man on us, some teams thrive on teams going man-to-man. -man. All they did was change up their defense because the defense they was playing before wasn't working. That tells me one thing. If they press 2-2-1, two, 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 we can break their press. But if they go man-to-man -man and every time a man comes to W, if you don't make that next pass, or weak side don't help with the next pass, what's gonna wind up happening is, one man is gonna get double team, gonna be a tie up, it's gonna be a jump ball every time they double team us. Did, did y'all hang out last night or something? Did y'all get a good night's sleep before the game? If you stay out all night long playing in a manhunt, you can't come to the game here and play today. You can't do it. Our first playoff game is when, George? Sunday, 1.30 against the Young Warriors. And I'm gonna tell you, they gonna come out playing harder than anybody. You know why? Because they don't wanna lose. And they had a losing season. The first round of the playoffs had the number two seed Lions playing the number seven seed Young Hoyas. The number three seed Hoyas played the number six seed No Limit and the number four seated Beacons played the number five seated Stompers. I'm gonna talk about the playoffs today. We have the first game is um, the Young Hoyas who are the seventh ranked seed, one in 13, and they are what they are. They're young, an inexperienced team, and we're go they're going against the number two seed, the Lions, who, um, you know, they're nine and four. They've beaten all the teams below them and lost the teams ahead of them, but this game on paper seems like a Probably is going to be a route, unfortunately, but anything can happen because the young boys have been playing better and they have a few players to look out for. And, you know, they're point guard. Uh, Mr. Callender is a good ball player and they have the leading three point shooter in the league, also. Uh, this year, our season was a little 
was I wasn't expecting as this is to be this bad. But you know, we played, we did the best we can do when I'm here this year. And I'm trying, you know, and next year maybe it'll be better. No, it will be better next year. And today's strategy is they just gotta go out and play. And most of our players not here today, been like this all season. And right now, I hope for a rain. <laughs>
Isaiah Thomas said, yeah, we're going to all go home and get out on two knees and say our prayers. Hey, hi. Today's the championship game between the Boston Lions, who are 11-4, and the undefeated Hawks. The Hawks are the heavy favorite because the Lions are out their center. And we're ready to start the game right now. <laughs> Nobody's going to give us anything, all right? It doesn't matter that we're that we did years ago, all right? That's how you have to think. Right now, everybody has to play hard for the entire game. Nobody's not going to lay down and give us a chance. We have to go out there and take it. All right, we're going, um, we're going, we're going uh, 2 2 1 from the beginning, all right? They get the ball past half court, we drop back into a regular 2-3 zone, all right? Everybody has the rebound. Only one person is breaking out, the smallest person. Everybody else stays underneath the basket and tries to rebound. Guards got to come down, when the big man bring that ball down, you got to be there for the steal. If you don't bring it down, then you got to shoot it, shoot it from where you at, all right? Come on, hands in, let's go. One, two, three. Bro, go out there. Go out there. Go out there, Daddy. Go out there. Daddy, go ahead out there. It's time to leave. Packed up all my favorite things. Storms could come my way, bring clouds. I'm not afraid. Cause I believe this will be my destiny. Storms are sending out rain, also bring winds of change. Finally. Feel like I can spread my wings Destination's clear but my flight's been delayed Time and time again I found So once your feet come off the ground You can't help but find a strength To break loose from the chains that held you from your dreams Oh, it's the test in me In me In my head, always worried that I might run out of time. And then suddenly, like a day brand new, all my colors began to fall in place. Filling all my void, I'm all the joy. Made a difference in my life, led me to the place I wanna be. In me, baby, the best of me. I was born for the best of me. now it's up to me to make sense for my life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, it was always up to me. And it took me some time, but now I realize we're divine in life. I just wish that um, it could have been a little bit more competitive, you know. But we have other games to play. There'll be more competition because we're moving on to play uh, represent Brooklyn in Nike East Wish. We're playing Long Island next Thursday. 
He came in second place. And you gotta hold that heads up because they want a better team. We played them as tough as we could with the side we had. And uh, I, saw, I saw a lot of heart. A lot of heart. The last day of the preteen season always encompasses the All-Star Game and the award ceremony. This All-Star Game is a reunion of sorts as the All-Stars from the Playhouse, including DJ Cutler and Cubby Walls, along with Devon Pinkston of the Stompers, are allowed to play in the game. MVP, score a point! MVP, score a point! MVP put one in the hole. Oh. 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 These are the six best players in the league from day one to um to now. All league. First one, D Mac. Stoppers. All league. D Mac. Second, the leading scorer in the league, Mark York. Mark York. Third, Tyreek Brand. Tyreek. Fourth, DJ Cutler. DJ. Next one, the first player in all league to make it at 10 years old. First, also the first one to make it without scoring double figures. Led the league in rebounds. Second and block shots, Winston McLeod. And last all league player, Cubby. Cubby. <laughs> These are the six best defensive players in the league. The first one, Jason Gay of the Beacons. Jason Gay, give him a hand. Jason Gay. Next one, Winston McLeod. Winston. Here you go, my man. DJ Cutler. Where's DJ? One of the best defensive players in the league. Daniel Banks, leader in the league in steals. Daniel Banks. Where is he? Oh, there you go. Congratulations. Okay. And Dyreek Brand. Defense. Where's Dyreek? Dyreek. Oh, okay. And, and, and the last one is D Mac on the Stompers. Macintosh, all defense. Mookie. 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 Next award is Rookie of the Year. This goes to the player who in his first year in preteen who comes back next year for the best year. It was a tough choice, but it's Corey. Ty, the Beacons. Okay, Rookie of the Year. Give me a hand. Okay. Next award is for most improved. The player who played last year, who we felt improved the most of this year. That's Taekwon Goodlett or the Hawks. Hi, Quan. Right here. Most improved. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Most improved. Okay, MVP to All Star game. That's what's up, baby. Give me a hand. Mr. Pinkston, give me a hand. Mr. Okay. And, and, and sportsmanship. Who is sportsmanship again? Da Darik? Okay. Da 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 All right, sportsmanship. Darik, if we're going to fix this for you, it's going to be taken care of. Hoyas. Where are the Hoyas? Third place, Hoyas. Congratulations. Hoyas. What's that? Fifth place? Switch on. third place? Lions. 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 Are the Lions here? Lions. Second place. Day Day. Okay, give me a hand. Give me a hand. Give me a hand. We'll see, we'll see both of you next year. You play for the... Yeah, DeAndre. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, back, back. Where's Daniel? Oh, Daniel, Daniel Davis. Daniel Davis. We'll, see, we'll see you next year, too. Daniel? Go ahead. Okay. Any more Lions here? Uh, no, they're not here. Jimmy's not here? No, Jimmy's in Jersey. Okay. Oh, and he's locked up. Can't get no... Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Anybody want a trophy? I do. I do. <laughs> I deserve one. First place, the Hawks. Where are the Hawks? They are. All, all the Hawks here? Okay. Okay. 
Good Mark. Good I'm one behind. I'm one behind. Okay. I got you. But the first thing you must do 